WTN News, this is Montana This Morning. After a series of recounts following the primary election in Butte, there will be another recount this week. Coming up, the reason election officials are having to once again go through the ballots. MTN's Megan Elaine here, seeing just how much the ongoing teacher shortage is affecting Bozeman School District. Blinken in the Middle East pushing for ceasefire. I'm Jared Hill with a message from the U.S.'s top diplomat on the sticking points stopping the deal. Alrighty, it is 5.30 on this Monday morning. Jane McDonald and Matt Owl with you. And Matt, it's hard to believe these streets right by yeah. MSU in just a couple of days. It's going to be busy it's already with It's already filled. Uh, I've been moving in, mm -hmm. doing all the college stuff. I know yep. another set of folks um, moving in today. I know. So just, here we go. Here we go, people. All right. Uh, early morning temperatures a little on the warm side. Mm -hmm. Just be prepared. Um, temperatures into the 50s and 60s early. I wouldn't call it uh, hot, but it is not a uh, cool morning. Uh, definitely dealing with a little more cloud cover early on and even some showers in some of the mountain ranges in southwest Montana. It's the afternoon that holds the best potential of the uh, bigger downpours across parts of the area. It looks like our daytime highs should be into the 80s for today. Scattered showers and thunderstorms trying to fire off across the area through the afternoon early evening. I'm going to talk more in depth about what that means as we go through the next couple of days here in a few minutes. All right, thank you very much, Matt. Well, Butte Silverbow will conduct a recount of the June primary election next week after discovering about 1,000 ballots were counted twice. The Butte Clerk and Recorder confirmed to MTN la last week that they suspect about 1,000 ballots may have been accidentally run through a vote tabulator machine twice during the June 4th primary election. Clerk and Recorder Linda Sajor Joyce suspects the overcount was human error and not an error of the machine. A recount will be conducted today in the Butte Civic Center Annex. All ballots in the race will be hand counted by staff and run through the tabulators. The results must be completed by Thursday, August 22nd, and the public is welcome to watch the recount. Some of the races in the primary were close, and this error could change the results. Now, our top story this half hour, with the start of school fast approaching, Montana is facing an ongoing teacher shortage. Our Megan Elaine spoke at the Bozeman School District to see how this is affecting Bozeman schools. I'm not going back to school, but with Montana's ongoing teacher shortage, how is the Bozeman School District keeping up, and are they ready for this upcoming school year? Our numbers of, of applicants are down quite a bit over the last five years. Pat Strauss, the director for human resources at Bozeman School District, tells me the open positions became available in April and they try to have them filled by July. He says they are still hiring. Well, we're pretty fortunate in Bozeman. We did hire 53 new teachers, um, a, a large group of special ed teachers. There were 12 uh, brand new special ed teachers to the district. And so that that number we've never seen before. We feel very fortunate uh, to be able to fill the, fill those spots in particular. As of August 1st, the Office of Public Instruction's employment portal listed 853 active job postings for licensed public school positions in Montana. That tells me there are only two positions in Bozeman and they are currently being processed. He says the government website doesn't update filled positions automatically and that roughly 95% of their applicants apply directly through Bozeman School District's website. Most of those recent applicants, he says, are graduates from local colleges and universities. Universities. So we're, we're lucky to have that in-state pipeline um, because, you know, one of the challenges in Bozeman for any teacher, any employee is, is housing. One teacher I spoke with who didn't want to be identified shared with me that there has been an education crisis predominantly since COVID. The teacher says the shortage is very much felt in Bozeman as educators are filling the missing gaps. But Pat says... I'm really lucky in Bozeman uh, the last few years to continue to recruit and retain teachers and so we're super happy with how we're getting ready to start out the school year. He does say there is a need for custodians, food service, and paraprofessionals. For more information, visit our website. In Bozeman, Megan Elaine, MTN News. And this morning, the race to reach a ceasefire escalates. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in Israel for high-stakes meetings with the country's president and its prime minister as the U.S. works to broker a deal to end the fighting and stave off a broader conflict in the region. 
This comes after yet another week of talks appear not to have moved the needle. CBS's Jared Hill has the latest. This is my ninth visit since October 7th. Nearly 10 months since Israel's bloody war against Hamas began in Gaza. This morning, Secretary of State Antony Blinken is back in Tel Aviv, working to strike a deal to end the fighting. Probably the best, maybe the last opportunity to get the hostages home, to get a ceasefire. The U.S.'s top diplomat is meeting with Israeli President Hartzog and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu one day. After two Israeli missiles hit an apartment building in New Serrat in central Gaza, in another airstrike nearby, a man pulled three lifeless girls from the back of his car. Despite intensive meetings last week, mediating nations Qatar, Egypt and the U.S. have failed to broker a deal between the Israeli government and Hamas leaders. Blinken is expected to push to close the gap on a proposal presented by President Biden back in May. Hamas is accusing Netanyahu of making new conditions to prolong the war. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Tel Aviv, a bittersweet birthday celebration for the family of Romy Gonan, the 24-year-old believed to be among the nearly 100 people held hostage by Hamas in Gaza. We could choose stay at home and, you know, be alone with, with our pain, and, but we chose different. This public display meant to make sure none of them are forgotten. Jared Hill, CBS News. And after today's meeting in Tel Aviv, Blinken then heads to Egypt. Negotiators hope reaching a ceasefire can deter Iran from unleashing an attack on Israel in retaliation for killing a Hamas leader at the end of July. Now, back in some Charger State headlines, stepping into the next phase of life can be stressful for young adults, facing new challenges like college applications and health care. But for children aging out of the foster care system, the next step can be especially challenging. Our Megan Thompson introduces us to an Anaconda woman who started a nonprofit with a nationwide reach to help. A nationwide nonprofit based right here in Southwest Montana aims to help children who are aging out of the foster care system as they take their next step in life. Hey, Liza, how are you today? I'm good. You're good. How has your week been? It's been pretty good. A lot of people don't even think about like the older foster youth or what happens to the foster youth after they leave the system. Lacey Bailey is the founder and CEO of Foster Kids United, an online platform that uses AI to match mentors with foster youth and guide them through crucial steps that will elevate their lives after they leave foster care. I want to go to school for psychology. So I'm working to get my GED so then I will be able to apply for college and everything. Liza McIntyre is 18. She says she moved a lot when she was in foster care and it impacted her grades, leaving her without enough credits to graduate. She's working through the GED program with Foster Kids United. Lacey says this is exactly the kind of need her organization seeks to address. We see this with a lot of former foster youth, you know, not really being able to get a good job. And then homelessness is huge because when they turn 18, they have nowhere to go. They have no family, they have no help, and so they end up on the streets. Lacey is all too familiar with the difficulties foster kids face when leaving the system. She was in foster care for about eight years, beginning at the age of 10. I really just kind of struggled with you know, housing and school and all that. And I'm trying to create a community for these foster youth to feel welcome, part of a family. We have the same shared experience of it. And even though it doesn't define us as foster kids, it really does give us that common bond. Foster Kids United was recently awarded $1,500 for five Montana foster youth to participate in the year-long program to obtain a GED. To find out how to apply for this program, visit our website. In Butte, Megan Thompson, MTN News. Thank you very much, Megan. Well, it's a unique road trip, at least 66 million years in the making. A popular dinosaur fossil in eastern Montana wall will soon be making a trip to Bozeman. Staff at Museum of the Rockies have excavated the fossil of a duck-billed dinosaur from the Mako Sheikah State Park near Glendive. The popular fossil was a fixture alongside a hiking trail, but officials were concerned that it might be lost in a sinkhole. 
The fossil, estimated to be just under three feet wide and weighing about 300 pounds, will be transported to the Museum of the Rockies for preservation work to get it ready to be displayed at the visitor center at the park. More than 10 different dinosaur species have been discovered in Mako Shika, including a complete triceratops skull and fossil remains of a Tyrannosaurus rex. I think that's pretty <laughs> cool. Use uh, some of our resources and expertise mm -hmm. at uh, Montana State University. I know John Scanella will uh, take good care Absolutely. of that fossil. He and all those students that, that are working right. to become paleontologists. Really amazing stuff. Now, before we head into a break, speaking about amazing stuff, I think this counts okay. as something pretty amazing. We're heading over to Germany. Amazing, beautiful. What? Wait what is going on? Wait a minute. What's? I thought the Olympics were done. It, well, I've never seen the Olympics with a bathtub. Well, I mean, maybe it's a new event. Yeah. I mean, breakdancing is now uh, an event. Well, breaking made it. Yeah, right. And so why not get the old bathtub races yeah. in the sand next year? Oh, my gosh. Oh. Oh, yikes. Yeah, that one didn't. <laughs> Turn out so great. This is an annual event that they hold in the river just to have some fun, you know, mainly to see if their ingenuity and engineering comes in as yeah. special handy for these bathtub races. But it's also just a fun way, hey, to invite tourists to come have some fun. It and looks then like also, fun, actually. yeah, a little Batman and Robin action right yeah. there. You know, might be a little slow if you put the bat signal up there. Yeah, no, I don't know how that is. I think it's the Batman. Yeah, the Batman. Bat. Bath. In the bathtub. In the bathtub. That's it. Yeah. To the Batmobile. <laughs> Bathmobile. Exactly. Make sure you remember the ducky. All right, 541. Quick break coming your way on Montana this morning. When we come back, though, we are going to be talking about some Bobcat football. It is time for the season to start kicking off. We're going to have that story for you. But first, let's take a peek over onto Wall Street. It wasn't a bad day on Friday. Dow Jones up at 96 points and Nasdaq up 37 and the S&P 500 up 11. We're going to have more of your CBS News in your Money Watch when we come back. <laughs> 